All right, guys, you know what this means. Time to repot some orchids. So, I'm gonna do something new today, something I don't typically do. I'm gonna add um, some fur chips, some fur bark to my mix. And the only reason I'm gonna do that is because, um, one, this is a cattle, or this is a Catalina type, this is a Vanda and this bandit is being grown in bark, and I don't really want to mess that up. Um, I know that in my climate, I cannot grow things bare root. Um, case in point, I have this Catalea on a chunk of lava rock, and the only way I can get away with this is this sits in a big casserole dish, a nine by nine casserole dish, or sorry, 10 by 10 casserole dish. And whenever I water it, all that extra water goes down into the bottom of the dish and the lava rock, it wicks all that moisture back up and the roots are able to uh, access it. So that's the only way I can grow things bare root is if they're basically sitting in water. So um, that's the only one I have that's like that, and that's honestly the only one I'm going to keep like that. Um, I would love to grow this bare root. I would love to just pop it out of this bark and attach a stringer to it so I can hang it up and have it just pendant like this, and then just dunk it in a bucket of water to water it, but I would have to do that every morning and every night. and. I don't have time to do that. I work uh, between 10 and 12 hours a day and I just, I can't do that. We, I got too much going on and I have animals I have to feed and take care of and lots of projects around the house that need to be done uh, constantly. So that's just not going to happen. These um, are going to get potted up. This uh, Vanda Cerulea and this division of the Dialelia Snowflake that uh, <clears throat> we unboxed in the last video. So I've got two self-watering pots. It looks kind of dirty, but that's just leftover moss from when I had some sitting in there. Nothing too big to worry about. Um, I'm going to stick this guy in here. Uh, I'm going to try to get all the roots in. So um, I think I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to try to divide this again because there's one, two, three pseudobulbs here. And then over on this side, there's one, two, three pseudobulbs with a new growth. You can probably see it better right here. And this one has a flower spike on it. So I'm going to try to not stress this one out enough. I did water this since I've had it and it still has its green growing tips. Um, but I am going to see if I can divide this one more time. And it's, it does have an active eye down in here. I don't know if you can see that. But down in there, there is an active eye, and it should, cross the fingers, it should send up another new growth off of that. The only issue with doing that is, if I divide this again, this section of pseudobulbs will not have any live viable roots. Um, all the new roots are on these latest three growths, and I don't really want to mess that up, but if... I do, it's not going to matter because it's got three strong big growths that are very, very healthy with a new growth on the way, and it's got a massive root system, so I'm not worried about setting this back um, if this doesn't take. So um, I'm just going to pull this apart, and it looks like it just is going to detach just like that. Um, I'm not going to bother putting cinnamon on it, I've never had to use cinnamon. My climate is, like I mentioned, it's so dry here that I have never, ever had an issue with an orchid rotting because of an exposed wound. I know I should put cinnamon on that and seal that wound, but I'm not going to. I like to live dangerously, apparently, but at Stella. We had a little creature trying to get into the live moss I just received the other day. She's finally back, not 100% to her sweet old self, but 
Um, back around Mother's Day, she decided to go through a heat cycle because we didn't get her fixed and she turned into a little psychopath. So we couldn't even enter this room without her hissing, screaming, and trying to rip your toes off. So we had to, to take her to the vet and get her fixed and it took about four months May, June, July, August, September, yeah. Just over four months for her hormones to finally settle down and her to calm down and be a nice little creature again. But anywho, uh, she's not gonna help us today. She's just causing problems. So I'm gonna move that moss I have on the floor and she can just scurry around and do her thing. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to pop this one up with this one. I'm going to keep this separate and I'm going to try to um, propagate this. Um, hopefully, if that eye develops, and there's actually two older ones here that could develop also. Um, this growth, this suitable, that's got an eye there, an eye there, and then this bigger one, it's got an actual green eye right there. So I'm gonna try to stick this in some moss and see if I can get this one to develop another plant. And if it does, I might pot it together, I might give it away, I might sell it, I don't know. Um, we'll just have to see. So this is gonna go back in the box. And this one is going to go in here. So um, bear with me, I forgot the leca, which is what I use as a drainage layer at the bottom. So I just use these Lekka beads, and this is a self-watering pot. It's got a wick in there, and it's got this little tube. I just like to fill this tube with uh, the Lekka beads. That way, if I get this too full and it's sitting in water, the Lekka beads will be what's saturated, not the media, and I won't cause rotting that way. So I'm just gonna pour enough of these in the bottom just to fill up that little hole and the very bottom of the pot. Put these over here for now, because I don't have any room. I have way too much on this table. So here you can see I've got just a bottom layer, that doesn't need to be in there, bottom layer of Lekka, just enough to cover the bottom here. So what's gonna go in next is gonna be the sphagnum moss, because that'll be interacting with the wick here and it'll be drawing moisture up. And then I'll do back and forth, bark, moss, bark, moss, bark, moss, bark, until um, it's completely potted up. job at cleaning up the dead roots on this. Um, there are some, and I'm just going to take my handy dandy shears here and just snip off. Actually, that's all dead, so I'm just going to take actually my actual pruning shears here and just snip the bottom of the rhizome here so it's a smaller wound, and that way all of those dead roots come off with it. So, dead, dead, dead. This is the newest growth, and I'm going to position this, if I can, in here in such a way that as I twist it, the new growth eventually 
faces forward. I know this didn't come with any pests, but I do have pests here, and they like to hide inside those old dried sheets. So these are going to come off, and it looks like this is a flower spike that aborted, so I'm not even going to mess with that. This old sheet is going to come off. This one on this side is going to come off. That's still green, so I'm not going to pull that off yet. That's still being used by the plant to photosynthesize and feed it, so that's just going to stay on there until it turns brown and I'll peel it off like the rest of them. I also like to do this because it exposes the uh, active eyes, and they then, ah, excuse me, then they don't have any issues um, breaking through that hard outer sheet. They can just start growing. And this newest growth, surprisingly, I don't see any new eyes on this newest growth. I don't understand. I mean, it could be they haven't developed yet, but also this has this this big newest growth right here. It has a lot of roots on that side, and I can see one eye way down here in the base. But oh, yep, yeah, there's the other one. There's the biggest one. That's probably going to be the one right here. There's still a sheath covering it. Let's see if I can get that off there. Not damaging it. Um. This is going to be the eye that develops and starts to grow when or if this blooms and finishes blooming. This newest eye way down here will be what starts growing next. So this one's going right now, which is awesome. And then this one should come up right next to it. So it'll have basically two forward facing directions of growth. At that point, once those two take off, then I'll be able to divide it and turn it around. And in theory, get a large specimen plant out of this, which is what I would love to do, because this is a very rare orchid variety that you are going to find in your typical nursery. Um, Paula sent this to me, uh, a piece of it, because a piece was sent to her, or a plant was sent to her on accident from the nursery, and it was a big no-no. 
I'm assuming the person who sent it got in very, very bad trouble because she had ordered one plant of just a common variety of Catalea and they sent her this instead. And she was very perturbed that it was sent to her because it's not what she wanted, but um, she was just mad that they'd messed up in general. And yeah, I'm lucky to have a piece of it because I've been looking for this for a long time anyways, and now I'm glad I have it. So this is actually one of the parents to this Catalonia. Oh, I'm gonna knock over fertilizers and stuff. I'm so glad I have these shelves here and I have this room cleaned up now. To this one, which is Dilalia Mizaguchi, which is Lalius, um, Snow Dilalia Snowflake crossed with Lalia Anceps. And I got this as, what the heck? That looked like sooty mold. I don't know why that's in here. I don't have enough humidity for that even to be in here. Well, that shit's gonna go bye-bye. Um, Sorry, anyways, I got this off of an eBay auction. I cannot believe I won it. So this guy's potted up, he'll go up here. But this guy was a, oh gosh, it was a four suitable division from someone's specimen plant and they just had, they destroyed their, their specimen plant. They, they took all, like 15 divisions out of it and I got the one division that had four pseudobulbs. It was the largest division. I specifically asked for that division of it and they said, oh well I can't guarantee you'll get that one. You'll just have to bid on it. I was like, okay fine. So I went online. I stayed up till like midnight to make sure I got this division and it wasn't as pricey as I thought it was because there was a lot more divisions available and people were bidding on those because they looked healthier. But I specifically got this because I knew it would be healthier, and it was a four suitable division. And when I got it, it had two active growths on it, so I snapped those in half. Or I just snapped this, the rhizome in half, so I got two plants, and each one had a direction of growth, and I put them side by side, and so they started growing opposite. So it's grown uh, this cane in my care, along with this cane. And then it put out these two canes, which right here, flower spike, and this one right here, let's see if I can get this pointed towards the camera. Maybe. This is in the way too. There's a spike forming right there. And at the same time, there's a new growth going right there, and that one's not going yet, but if you look inside here, let me adjust my brightness here, exposure. Look down in there, there's a new growth way down in there, and it's not gonna focus. Anywho. This guy, I'll put a picture up of what the flowers will look like. This is a, or sorry, the Dilalia snowflake. This is the parent to this one. And apparently the Lilia Anceps back cross just makes this thing go crazy. Because I have not had an issue with it. It is a very, very vigorous plant. Now, we're going to put together flying here. This guy, I'm just going to pull out this, put this on the floor for now because Stella isn't bothering anything, so we're going to put that there and move things over. This one I'm going to put in a basket type pot. Sorry, I have to kill this fly because it is driving me out up the wall. Alright, so same thing. Um, this guy's growing exclusively in bark. <sighs> and I really want to keep it in exclu exclusively in bark, but again, like I keep mentioning, 
I cannot grow in exclusively bark. I have to have moss mixed in, otherwise they just dry out way too fast and I cannot afford to water them uh, every single day. So he's getting a self-watering pot. He's just gonna have to adjust. He's got every single root has an active growth tip and they're even branching. Like this big root right here, it's got a branching tip there. This one is branching here, here, and a new branch on the back side. So I'm not concerned about its root system um, failing because it is currently in active growth. It is going to adapt no matter what I put it in. So um, I guess I'm gonna see if I can pull this out. Give it a little squeeze, a little squeeze, a little squeeze, a little squeeze. First things first, I need to put a bottom layer of Lucka in. Actually, you know what? In this one, I don't think I'm going to because it's not going to be sitting in water. The actual basket doesn't sit all the way to the bottom of outer pot. So I'm just going to put this in through here. Like so. And then down the other like so, pull them until they're about even, and I'm going to leave a little loop in here so that I can put some sphagnum moss underneath of that, and that'll help a lot with watering and wicking up um, enough moisture to keep this pot uh, plenty humid for the root system. So. That was a pretty decent layer of moss there. So now we're going to dump in a bunch of bark. Not going to dump it in because that's just going to make a mess. And I don't learn from my mistakes. So we're just going to put some bark in the bottom. Now we're going to take this out. And I'm going to assume that this is good quality Orchiata bark. And it looks like it's got perlite and some other stuff in here. So, looks like it even has some grit and sand and rock in there. So I'm just gonna dump that in with it. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, I've actually heard, just word of mouth, nothing substantial or anything. But if you include a little bit of the original potting mix that the plant came in, with whatever it is you're potting it up in, they perform a lot better. I don't know if that's true, that's only hearsay. Um, I would assume that would help a little bit. It would probably provide less of a shock to the orchid if it is disturbed as least as, as less as possible. That just makes sense to me. But yeah. Um, I think that looks pretty good. It's pretty centered in the pot and it's growing pretty darn straight. So I'm going to grab some more moss.
Fox, Vandus Cerulea. I've been waiting for this one for a long time, and you know what they say, patience is a virtue, and all good things come to those who wait, and for people who grow orchids, they all know all too well that you have to have patience when you're dealing with orchids, because they are not... They aren't for people who need instant gratification. They are a passion. You have to be patient with them, because if you're not, you're just going to have a bunch of really sad, terrible, unhealthy looking plants, and you're just going to end up throwing them away. So, this is Vanda Cerulea, and this is the wild type. It's the lighter colored flower. Um, it's almost like a periwinkle blue, not a blue blue like the major nurseries are um, crossing back to to get those real bright, deep blue veining in the petals. I don't like that personally. I like the true periwinkle blue wild type variety of this, and that's what I got. I will put up the exact photo of the eBay um, photos of it when it was in bloom. I'll put those on because I don't think those have a copyright because it has been purchased by me. So for all intents and purposes, this is my plant and it was this plant's blooms. So you will see these, this plant in bloom in a previous picture from one from before I bought it. Um, as you can see, it's bloomed once there and it's bloomed once there. So the next spike, if I can get it to re-bloom, should either come out of this node but below this leaf or maybe even um, out of this next leaf joint here. So that's that. That's for this video and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining in.